Starting off at number 10 now, we have Tech Tech. This is the urban legend about a girl who fell under a train and was cut in half. She then became a vengeful spirit that moves using her hands and elbows, dragging herself while making the sound Tech Tech. If you hear that noise, you're supposed to just run for your life. Those who are caught by the Tech Tech will receive a fate just like hers. She's said to slash her victims in half so that they look like her, and possibly also become wandering vengeful spirits just like she is. At number 9 now, we have the Slit Mouth Woman. You may recognize this one from a number of Japanese movies and TV shows. The traditional name for this being is Kuchi Saki Ona, and dates back over 300 years ago. She's a woman who was brutally murdered by her husband after he found out that she she was having an affair with another samurai. This left her in death as a restless, vengeful spirit. She is said to cover her mouth with a cloth mask, a fan, or a scarf. If you approach her, she'll ask you if you think she's pretty. If you answer yes, she will then remove the mask, and when the victim screams, they will be slashed from ear to ear until they look like her. Even if you say no to this question, she's said to just follow you home and then brutally murder you that night. Bit of a lose-lose situation. Next up at number 8 now, we have Daruma San. This urban legend is is more of an old game that's been passed down through the years. So here's how it goes. You shower in a bath, you turn off the lights, and you chant, Daruma San fell down while you wash your hair. It's said that you will then see a woman in your mind. She is Daruma San. She'll be standing up in a bath. You will see her slip and fall onto an old rusty tap. It goes straight through her eye and kills her then you will feel her ghostly presence somewhere behind you. Now if you turn around, there she will be. Black, tangled hair, rotting clothes, one eye is bloodshot, and the other is just a bloody hollow eye socket. The game continues even further than that if you dare, but I think that's enough for you guys to understand just how creepy this urban legend is. Okay, at number 7 now, we have The Girl from the Gap. This Japanese story comes from people's natural fear of what lies lurking in the cracks of a home. Do you guys ever see something move past the hinge of a door? when the door is open? Is that someone looking out from inside your wardrobe? Have you ever pictured a hand reaching out from between your bed and the floor? Well, it could be the girl from the gap, a spirit that lives both physically and metaphorically between worlds. It's said that if you ever see her, she will ask you if you want to play hide and seek. At that point, the game is on. When you see her between a gap again, she'll drag you to an otherworldly hell. At number 6 now, we have The Red Room. This is a very modern Japanese urban legend about a pop-up ad that's all red and black. When you see it, in a child's voice, it will simply repeat the phrase, do you like? Apparently a boy who got the pop-up tried to close it, but it just kept reappearing. Then it changed to, do you like red? He keeps trying to close it, but it grows larger and changes again to say, do you like the red room? Then the site changes entirely. It's just completely red and black. It has a list of names on it. His friend's name is at the bottom. A hand reaches out towards the boy's neck from a video. The ending gets even more twisted, but guess what? It's based on a real website. It's still out there. If you can find it, you'll know the gruesome legend of the Red Room and if the horrible ending comes true for you. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the Human Pillars. This legend dates back to ancient times in Japan where it's known as Hito Bashira. Back then, there was a belief that a human sacrifice sealed inside a structure would make the foundation more stable. This means that many old Japanese buildings are said to contain the spirits of the people who were sacrificed during their construction. One famous example is Matsu Castle where a woman was sealed inside the foundations during its construction. Now her spirit is said to haunt the castle, and whenever a woman dances there, the castle shakes violently. Many building owners in Japan are actually quite open about their buildings being a human pillar. Next up at number 4 now, we have the Snake Woman. This one comes from the old Japanese folklore of Nuri Onna, which translates to Wet Woman. She's often described as having the head of a woman and the body of a snake, with long claws, snake eyes, and jet black hair. She carries with her a childlike bundle to lure in her victims. If a person then tries to pick up the baby to help, they find it's not actually a child at all. The bundle then becomes very heavy and stops the victim from fleeing. The snake woman then uses her long tongue to suck all of the blood from the victim's body until they die. Next up at number 3 now, we have Oni Baba. She is a demon woman that often appears in Japanese folklore. She will often appear as an old woman asking for help, but if you get too close, she will slice you open with a knife and eat you. She's said to be the tormented spirit of a woman who acts 
accidentally killed her own pregnant daughter and unborn grandchild in an effort to find a cure for her friend's child being sick. She was told to bring back the liver of an unborn child, but when she finally killed her victims, she found they were actually her own family. Okay, next up at number two now, we have The Dream School. This one is extra creepy because apparently, if you don't forget this story within a week of hearing it, it will happen to you. Let's see if that's true. One night, a boy had a dream about a school. The hallways just looped forever, bringing him always back to the start. Staircases led back to the first floor. As he got quite scared, he heard footsteps behind him. He ran until he found an emergency exit with a glass box and a key next to it. The glass had been smashed and there was no key, just a note saying that it could be found in room 108. When he found that room, it was empty. No students, but there were backpacks hanging off every single chair. Then there was a pounding on the door. He opened it, terrified, to find the hallways covered with dead children. It's said that he never woke up from his dream, and if you don't forget this story in one week, you will meet the same fate. Don't worry though guys, I don't think this is true. Although if you don't see me on the channel next week, sorry. And finally at number one now, we have Onryo. This is a traditional Japanese belief about a vengeful spirit that can and will physically hurt the living. It's a very scary concept if you're only familiar with the western idea of ghosts, which don't really tend to take solid forms and so can't hurt humans with physical contact in the traditional way. That's not true though for an Onryo. They are vengeful and full of hate, stopping at nothing to enact the suffering they received when they were alive. For any of you guys who have seen The Grudge, this spirit is the influence for that creepy girl in that movie. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Himuro Mansion. If you love creepy houses with very paranormal stories, you may have heard of this very famous one. Himuro Mansion is a secluded building on the outskirts of Tokyo where brutal murders were carried out by a family in what was known as the Strangling Ritual. It was insane. The family believed there was a portal on their property that was bringing them bad karma from deep within the earth. They decided they had to seal it. They adopted a local village girl at birth and raised her in isolation until she was ready for her purpose. When she was old enough, they tied her wrists, ankles and neck to five different oxen. Then they made the oxen pull in five different directions. The girl's limbs and head were ripped clean off her body. They then took the rope, soaked it in her own blood and laid it at the entrance of the so-called portal. This was their ritual and they believed that every sacrifice would protect them for the years to come. Something went wrong though during the very last ritual. The woman who was supposed to be raised in isolation had actually formed a bond with a man who had tried to rescue her. Her captors didn't realize this though and how much this tiny detail would affect the ritual. It backfired and cursed them. The father went insane and murdered his whole family before falling on his own sword. This dark ending stained the mansion with their souls forever. Locals say the walls are often splattered with fresh blood, even though nobody has lived there for years. Some say it's the blood of the family reappearing there. Others say it actually belongs to people who visit the mansion these days, not realizing they are the next victims of the strangling ritual. Next up at number nine now, we have Aka Manto. In English, this one is known as the Red Cape. It's said to be a malicious spirit who kills people at public and school bathrooms. The spirit will always ask them if they want red or blue paper. If you say red, you will suffer a bloody, violent death. If you say blue, you'll be suffocated until you turn blue and die. You can't trick the spirit either. If you try and say you just want normal white paper, ghostly hands will appear out of nowhere, sometimes right out of the toilet you're sitting on, and drag you down to hell. That's right. If you do something as simple as asking for white paper, you'll be dragged to hell through a toilet. I always suspected toilets were portals to the underworld. This confirms my theory. There is one and only one way to avoid this grisly fate. They say you have to actually refuse anything the spirit offers you. If you do this, he will leave, at least for now. I guess you can be dragged to hell through a toilet another day. Moving on to number eight now, we have Tomino's Hell. This has become a pretty famous urban legend of the internet in recent years. You may know it as a creepy pasta, but its history actually dates back over a hundred years ago. According to legend, Tomino's Hell is the name of a story that was published in a 1919 collection of poetry titled Sarkin. The poet was Saijo Yasso, a university professor whose work was filled with strange symbols and wordplay that some people found very disturbing. The story is based around the Buddhist concept of hell and recounts the story of Tomino and his sisters being tortured in hell. Sounds interesting. I'm sure you now want to hear me read it out. Well, here's the thing. 
According to internet legend, the poem will curse the reader with misfortune and even death if read out loud. It should only ever be read in your head. Now, I'm not a particularly superstitious person, but uh, yeah. I'm not going to read it out unless I absolutely have to, and I don't. You can see excerpts of it on the screen now, and of course, you can find the full version of the poem online. Just remember, don't read it out loud. Don't want anything to happen to you, you know. I've grown quite fond of you guys. Next up, number seven now, we have Gotsu. This roughly translates to cow head and is a 17th century story that was deemed so horrific, so spine chillingly shocking, almost all copies of it were destroyed. The few people that read or heard from one of the last copies were said to sit in silence, shaking for days until eventually dying of fright. Now, because of all of this, only fragments of the tale remain to this day. One day, a school teacher was taking his students on a field trip. In order to calm them down on the bus, he decided to read them a horror story. For some reason, he chose to read from a copy of Gotsu. He only meant to scare the kids a little bit, but they began convulsing and begging him to stop. To his absolute horror, he found that he could not stop. It was as if some dark force was compelling him to continue. His eyes turned white. He said unspeakable things. The children were screaming and then nothing. He awoke a few hours later. The school bus was in a ditch. The driver was slumped over the wheel, shaking. The children were unconscious and foaming at the mouth. If you find a copy of that story. Miss me. Coming at number six now, we have Inunaki Village. Many Japanese villages are famous for their beauty. Not this one. This one is one you never want to visit. Legend says that society abandoned this place and lawless people moved in many years ago, outcasts of society who saw a chance to live somewhere where good people could never stop their wicked deeds. They had their own set of laws which legalized incest, cannibalization, and murder. As the rumors of this village grew, people wanted to know what happened. Why did everyone originally leave? Well, they say the villagers were killed off by a serial killer with an axe. Another explanation is that a terrible disease made everyone rot. As far as details about this dark place go, that's pretty much everything. Many people tried to visit it, but they say that those that succeed are never heard from again. The fact that you can't get a phone signal there only adds to its scare factor. Moving on to number five now, we have the Okiku doll. While many of the stories I talk about in this series are of spirits or things from thousands of years ago that you can't visit or touch, this is a very real doll that you can actually go and see for yourself. It's on display at a religious temple. It has its very own section there, and tourists come to see it. Why would a doll deserve all this special treatment? Well, how do I put this? The doll grows hair. Yeah. That's what they say. Perhaps even creepier is that the hair growing from the doll's head is human. So where did this creepy human hair growing doll come from? Well, according to the story, it was originally given to a two year old girl by her brother in 1918. The girl died a year later and the family kept the doll in memory of her. Some sort of strange soul fusing appears to have happened because that's when they noticed the hair growing. The parents were freaked out and brought the doll to a local priest. He agreed to keep it there for a few months and observe it to confirm if their story was true. He said it was. The doll has remained on display in the temple there ever since. The doll was named after the girl who it belonged to, and this year marks a hundred years since it was bought for her. Perhaps someone should keep an eye on it just for this year. Moving on to number four now, we have Kuni Kuni. Now some say this is basically the Japanese version of Slender Man. Kuni Kuni will always appear far away at first, in the distance, in the shadows, his white body twisting in the wind. It's a good thing that he appears at a distance from you because that's exactly how you want it to stay. They say if he ever does get near you, you will go mad forever. There is no cure, there is no coming back from this. If you step near him, your mind turns to permanent jelly. Now according to Japanese legend, he has claimed many, many victims over the years, but you often won't hear about them because the victims are left wandering alone, going nowhere fast until their mind and body collapse for good. Next up at number three now, we have the purple mirror. I'm quite happy with this story because it involves a creepy curse that doesn't affect you if you're over the age of 20. I am. But for those of you that aren't, here's a warning from this Japanese urban legend. A young girl was given a mirror by her mother for her birthday and spent many hours a day staring at it. The girl wanted more than anything to be beautiful and ended up developing an eating disorder in order to be thinner. It took its toll. She became weak and frail and not the beautiful figure she was once chasing. One day she threw her mirror on the ground in anger. It smashed everywhere. A little while later, she was making arrangements for her coming of age party on her 20th birthday. She got into a horrible car accident though and died at the scene. Her last words were a whisper, purple mirror, purple mirror. Her grieving parents searched for this mirror but they never found it. Now they say that if you do not forget the phrase purple mirror by your 20th birthday, something bad will happen to you. 
So forget those words. Maybe I never should have said them in the first place. Next up at number two now, we have Hanako San. Some call this evil spirit the terror of the toilet. You're about to see why. She is said to be a creepy girl that haunts bathrooms across Japan. Now, there have been so many stories about her that the details often vary, but the main story is usually the same. She's often found on the third stall of a women's bathroom on the third floor of a building. She has bobbed hair and wears a red skirt. She holds up in the bathroom waiting for someone to provoke her. However, if for some reason she isn't there, some say there is a way to bring her to you. I don't know why you would want to do that though, but here it is. You knock on the door to her stall in multiples of three. So knock, 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 knock. Then you call her name and ask if she's there. The most common version of this is to simply say, are you there, Hanako-san? If she is there and wants to be seen, she will reply in a faint voice saying, yes, I'm here. Now, of course, a story like this is never going to have a happy ending. Legend says that at this point, the stall door will just open to reveal a little girl in a red skirt who pulls the summoner into the toilet, probably to hell. And finally number one now, we have the Tokyo Terror Taxi. Great name, isn't it? This is a story of a taxi driver's paranormal experience in Tokyo many years ago. I'll read the most popular version to you now. It was a stormy autumn night near Aoyama Cemetery, where he picked up a poor young girl drenched by the rain. It was dark, so he didn't get a good look at her face, but she seemed sad, and he figured she had been visiting a recently deceased relative or friend. The address she gave was some distance away, and they drove in silence. A good Cabby doesn't make small talk when picking someone up from a cemetery. When they arrived at the address, the girl didn't get out, but whispered for him to wait a bit. She stared out of the window at a second floor apartment. Ten minutes or so passed as she watched, never speaking, never crying, simply observing a solitary figure move about the apartment. Suddenly, the girl asked to be taken to a new address. This one was back near the cemetery where he had first picked her up. The rain was heavy and the driver focused on the road, leaving the girl to her own thoughts. When he arrived at the new address, a modern house, in a good neighborhood, the cabbie opened the door and turned around to collect his fare. To his horror, he found himself staring at an empty back seat with a deep puddle where the girl had been sitting just moments before. Mouth open, he just sat there, staring at the vacant seat until a knocking on the window shook him from his revere. The father of the house, seeing the taxi outside, had calmly walked out, bringing with him the exact change for the fare. He explained that the young girl had been his daughter, who died in a traffic accident some years ago and was buried in Aoyama Cemetery. From time to time, he said, she hailed a cab and, after visiting her old boyfriend's apartment, asked to be driven home. The father thanked the driver for his troubles and sent him on his way. At number 10, we have the cursed Kleenex commercial. The PR team was probably in a firestorm when this information came out. They would have to do a press conference that was like, no, our product isn't cursed, it's just Kleenex. The legend goes that back in 1988, Kleenex released a commercial that freaked out the public. The commercial depicted a young woman using Kleenex as she was being bothered by a little kid who was wearing a costume that made him look like an Oni demon. Once the commercial was released, the offices of Kleenex Japan had their phone ringing off the hook. People were calling in saying that they thought the commercial was cursing their family because of the demonic kid dancing around and because they claimed the song that was playing in the video was someone reciting a German curse. The song in that video playing was It's a a fine day by Barton and Jane, so it wasn't a German curse. The commercial was taken off the air, but that didn't stop people from spreading rumors, which all turned out to be untrue. One of them was famously that the lead actress in the commercial was impregnated by a demon and gave birth to the Antichrist all over a Kleenex commercial. At number nine, we have the curse of Colonel Sanders. That's right, the king of fried chicken has put a hex on the land of anime. The curse is that every fifth person who eats fried chicken will spend $400 on Hello Kitty merchandise. No, I'm just kidding, I made that up. But there is actually a Colonel Sanders curse, but it's on a baseball team. Apparently, back in 1985, the Japanese baseball team, the Hanshi Tigers won the entire series, and the fans went crazy, like any fans of any sport they rioted, and they took a statue of Colonel Sanders and they threw it into the river. I have a couple of questions of why there was a statue of Colonel Sanders hanging around in the first place, but I'll save that for another video. Apparently after they did this, the team has never won a series. I like the idea that the dead mascot of a fast food chain has used dark magic to control sports in Japan. That's amazing. At number eight, we have Kokuri-san. Let's step away from the modern legends and move all the way back to the 18th century. Way back then, there was a game called Kokuri or Kokuri-san, which started spreading like wildfire. This game involves a few things. You need a pen, some paper, a coin, and a few friends. You put your finger on the coin while you write questions to Kokuri. 
I think you can play this game by yourself, but it would just be you alone with your finger on a coin writing messages to the air. So I don't think it would be that fun. There's a couple of legends about this game, but the scariest one being that Kokori will only answer the question of what day you will die. I mean, it might be comforting knowing how much time you have left, but knowing also might be like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Also, after you're done playing the game, you have to spin the coin within a certain period of time or Kokuri will bring you death. At number 7 we have the 1932 Kimono Fire. Back in 1932 there was a brutal fire in Japan who took the lives of many people. Now it's rumored that while this fire was burning there was a bunch of women trapped on the top of this building in kimonos. Firefighters put out nets for them to jump out safely but they refused. The reason that the women didn't want to jump is because they weren't wearing any underwear underneath their kimonos which is tradition. So they thought if they jumped everyone would see their lady bits and they would have been super embarrassed. So they decided to burn to death rather than having the shame of showing your coochie on TV. And then this was so brutal that it made Japanese people change their customs and make it okay for women to wear underwear underneath their kimonos. Now here's the truth, in reality there was actually a fire and a lot of people did actually die, but the whole thing about them not wanting to jump because they weren't dressed for the occasion was made up by western countries. Rumors were spread that exaggerated the intensity of Japanese traditions. At number 6 we have the Sony Timer. Companies get a lot of rumors spread about them, like the one that McDonald's is feeding poison to the nation's youth. Oh wait, that one's true. But there was a fake one spread about Sony, that all of their products had a built in timer inside them that would cause the product to break down shortly after the warranty was up. It was of course false. I've got a launch PS4 and the baby still works. It might sound like a jet plane taking off because the fan is so loud, but it still works. So this one was scary for your wallet. What do you want from me? It's part 3. I promise the rest of the ones on the list are very spooky. At number 5 with the Kiyotaki Tunnel. This tunnel is considered one of the most haunted places in all of Japan and there is a bunch of different legends that have circulated around it. Most people see the standard ghost in the tunnel haunting, like a ghost standing at the end of the tunnel and just stares at you while you're in your car. But some people have had much more intimate encounters with ghosts, ghosts appearing right in their cars. Some people say that they get so frightened that they've even crashed their vehicles. I mean, that's what I would say if I got into a car accident, like, oh, it wasn't me, it was a ghost, he spooked me. Also, I don't have insurance. There are many reasons why people think this tunnel is haunted. Some people believe that the area was once a battleground for many soldiers. Others say it's haunted by the souls of men who died building the tunnel. Either way, if you want to avoid a head-on collision, maybe stick to the highways. At number 4 we have Gashidokuro or the hungry skeleton. A giant skeleton man who is trying to take your bones. This is like the church rabbit if he was a murderer. You'd be like, hey silly skeleton, bones are for people. And then he would rip your throat out with his massive claw head. This demonic bone dude is supposed to be the combination of all the people who died from starvation and were never found. Their leftover bones come together to make a beast that has a never ending hunger and a hobby that involves taking your femur right from your body. They only come out at night and hang around the woods. And honestly, if you're walking around the woods at night, you deserve to be eaten by a skeleton monster. These monsters are very silent and they attack you without warning. The last thing you will hear is a ringing in your ears as the beast closes in. I wonder if you carry around a bone, you could distract it like a dog, like, oh, go fetch, boy, uh, leave me alone. And number three, Tenome. Hey, here's a tip, don't go around killing old people and you won't have to worry about a crazy ghost coming back to kill you and all your friends and everyone else it runs into for the rest of time. The legend of Tenome is about a regular old man minding his own business and a bunch of little hoodlums ran up to him and attacked him. They beat the poor dude so badly he laid in the street slowly dying. With his last few moments he cried out. He made a wish that he had eyes on his hands so he could see in whatever direction he wanted. This way no one could ever sneak up on him. He was in a blind fury and he got his wish. He came back as a ghostly figure that had eyes on its hands and the power to kill anyone who he saw with his eyeball hands. At number 2 we have Nopera Bo or the Faceless Ghost. There is a couple versions of this ghostly story. One involves it waiting under a bridge like some sort of troll. When people pass by it will kill them and leave behind animal hair on the body to make it seem like it was an animal attack. But my favorite version is about two fishermen who visit a pond. They were warned that they should never fish there because it was the burial ground for a woman and her ghost haunts the area. But they didn't care. While fishing the two men were approached by a young woman who asked them to leave. They just brush her off and then she decided to go full psycho because she was a ghost and she removed her own face. They scared the two men so badly that they ran back to their homes to their wives. They told their wives about their story and then their wives chastised them for bringing dark energy to the home and then removed their own faces. And then they said, Chris Angel, mind freak. At number one we have Kayako. If you ever watched The Grudge and the whole time it was playing you were like, what 
is going on? I don't get this at all. Well, it was about the story of Kayako, and I'll break it down for you with a few more details so the movie makes more sense. Kayako was a young woman married to a man. The two of them had a son and lived as a happy family. One day, Kayako came home, went upstairs to find her husband holding a knife and her diary. After reading it, he was convinced that his wife was cheating on him, so he went into a vicious rage. He attacked his wife and started stabbing her right in front of their child. She tried to run, but she tripped and broke her ankle. She then tried to crawl to safety. Her husband then snapped her neck, spinning her head all the way around. She was unable to move, but still alive, and she could only make the noise of a croaking frog. And then he left her into the attic to die, and then killed their son. Now you're like, ah, that makes so much sense. So why she crawls and she makes the noise, and her head's turned around, and why there's a ghost baby in the movie. 